Joining us today, Angel Investor and founder and CEO of Inside.com, Jason Calacanis joins us once again. Jason, good morning. Good morning, Carl. Great to hear, hear from you. You actually wrote it back in March uh, a post about what would happen uh, to funding if the market itself lost 50% of its value. Are any of the lessons yeah. you wrote back then applicable today? Yeah, absolutely. What happens when the market goes down is that angel investors and uh, even venture capitalists, even though they have a fixed funding amount, right, they raise a fund for seven years, they get a little conservative, um, they feel less rich, they feel like placing less bets, and the hurdle goes up. When things are optimistic and the market's going up 10, 20 percent a year, uh, you get a very loosey-goosey type of investment strategy, which is, I like this person, I like this idea, and people don't do as much due diligence, they don't require um, as much focus on profitability. And over the last week, I've seen a lot of deals go into um, essentially hibernation and uh, a pause. Let's reevaluate this deal. Let's take a look at the valuation. Let's take a look at the burn of the company, and let's take a look ultimately at, can this company be profitable? So we're, we're straight out of the girly school of economics here, right? I mean, uh, all those worries about cash flow, cash burn, uh, that gate is now closing, in your view. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the day of reckoning, uh, Bill and I and a, a bunch of other folks have talked about this a whole bunch at our poker game. And, you know, we know the day of reckoning is coming because we've all lived through it. We all lived through the dot-com bust. We all lived through the financial crisis and the Great Recession. And we've seen this movie before. And what happens is, you know, you have a web van or you know a bunch of these type of companies which they can't slow the spending down when the market corrects entrepreneurs are a savvy group if you give them low-cost capital free capital uh, and you tell them going big is a great idea they're gonna do it they're gonna take that opportunity and rightfully so and so they've been taking that opportunity they've been cashing up and they've been going big and that's why we have these amazing businesses which are doing extraordinary but you have to be able to change gears. And when you see that that funding environment is going to change, which Bill, myself, Chamath, all of us have seen, that this is going to change this year, uh, you have to be able to take what resources you have now and plan out a strategy to get to profitability so you don't become the web van of this generation. But we've been seeing, Jason, a lot of these startups building up as much dry powder as is humanly available to them. I mean, some of these companies have more than a billion dollars just sitting in the bank waiting for a rainy day because they knew that a market turn would eventually be around the corner. I guess the more disciplined approach would be to make sure you don't burn through all of that money. Are you seeing some companies that haven't been doing that, that have been spending too hastily, even with all of the dry powder that they said they were saving for the darker days? Absolutely. You know, I, I see it in a lot of young companies who look at, and, and they see companies like Uber or Airbnb, Palantir, you know, other companies that are raising large amounts of cap capital. And uh, what those younger entrepreneurs don't know um, when they see those big fundings at big valuations is that, hey, there's a real business here and a real business model that's working. Um, so they emulate, uh, the, you know, half the picture, and that's a huge mistake. The very savvy entrepreneurs are raising a ton of capital now and they're putting it in the dry powder you know room because when this market corrects those uh, dollars become worth two three four times as much right now you know hiring people is really hard real estate's really hard and customer acquisition costs when you're buying ads on Facebook and Google and Twitter to get people to download your app to get people to sign up for your service those are very expensive when this market corrects which it seems to be doing uh, and adjusting whether it's going to be a flat or a slow or a, a huge one it's going to be awesome for those companies that have built up those reserves because they all double and triple in value or and more for they can go 10x in value and for those who are, aren't so lucky should we be looking for headlines yeah. like we've seen a couple of over the past couple of weeks startups just closing their doors yeah, there's a lot of it going on right now. I'm involved in a lot of discussions. I'm seeing a lot of people come to me and saying, like, hey, I've got six weeks. Hey, I've got eight weeks. Um, and nobody will re-up. The existing investors won't re-up. So what you're going to see is a shakeout of the small companies. Um, would not be surprising to me if we're sitting here a year from now and 25% of the startups are gone. Um, but remember, we, we, we invest over $10 billion a quarter in venture capital and seed stage investing $50 billion a year. It's not even close to the amount of cash Apple has on hand. It's a small amount relative to the overall economy. So it's not like it's going to cause a bloodshedding uh, like we had in 1999 when retail investors bought into all this. We don't have that very dangerous component. So it's just going to be a bunch of 7 and 17 and 70 person startups going out of business or being aqua hired and they'll all go to work at Google, Facebook, Uber, 
and uh, Airbnb and Wealthfront. Right. Uh, it won't Jason, be painful. Yeah, uh, for them, for sure, for sure. Uh, thanks yeah. for your time as always, Jason. Good to talk to you. Jason Calacanis joining us today. Thanks for having me.